Let's get started with animation. Hi folks, I'm going to talk a little bit about timing and hand-drawn animation as opposed to computer animation. Here you see uh, a website, it's one of thousands of websites, it's a Reddit and uh, people show their work here. Most works are done in 2D, so hand-drawn. What you see here is a stuttering effect, but still you think that the guy is moving in a, at a normal pace. So how is this, how does this come about? It comes about from um, the amount of frames which were drawn per second. And uh, the typical movie sequence has 24, 25 or even 30 frames per second. Computer displays etc. Uh, they can have up to 60 frames per second I guess. But uh, when you do a hand-drawn animation 60 frames per second or even 25 are a lot of work. You need 25 individually painted or drawn frames per second. So for a, a half hour movie you need lots. Due to economical factors they reduced the standard speed from 25 to 15. Why 15? Because with 15 frames per second you still get that sort of fluent look of the animation whereas when you make it even slower it gets really, it looks stuttering. Let's have a look at a few other things here. For example her hair is not stuttering. It is perfectly fluid. That's uh, a hint that it's a computer animation. And these things they don't move like tak 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 but uh, very fluent that's so it's probably 25. Whereas here you have lots of stuttering again and during the decades of hand-drawn animation this became a, a signe for the uh, hand-drawn animation. It looks good because it's stuttering slightly. So uh, sometimes you want to achieve this effect in 3D animation and it's basically going back to a technology from the past with the time restrictions from the past. Uh, computers do their in-betweening at an overnight or on um, big render farms, whatever. So you have to teach your computer and to teach Maya to do that stuttering effect in order to get that cartoony look. How do we do this? And this is what this tutorial is about. So this is a scene in Maya. We need an animation which has slow and fast components in order to evaluate the stuttering effect, which the cool stuttering effect of a cartoon animation. And of course uh, animations like these with motion capturing are just perfectly fluid and elegant and no stuttering at all. I want to point your interest to this jump which the guy will perform now. Yep, and uh, the jump is uh, an indication of the proper timing because we have a feeling for the influence of gravity, basically. So he can do all these tiny motions here and uh, faster or slower. We would not detect that it's played back at a higher speed or lower speed, but with a jump we are totally critical and we know everything about the gravity here. So this is too slow obviously but when we run it this is perfect. I want to show you how the guy gets into the scene here. He's called Manuel and um, he's a free character including the texture which is a very nice texture and the animation, the mo motion capture data, which by the way you don't find when clicking here. This is the geometry, there are no keyframes here. Uh, you don't find them here with the locator selected, but you find him with the hidden skeleton uh, joints. This is only one of many uh, joints in his skeleton and here you see all the keyframes. If you uh, expand the timeline you will see that it starts at frame 1 and it ends at uh, sort of frame 1100. I 
prepared two things before I loaded him into the scene. One thing is this Windows, Settings, Preferences, Preferences. And here in the middle you find the settings. And I set the settings from centimeters, which is the default, to meters. Because in character animation you usually deal with meters and this gives you a proper layout of the grid in comparison to the his height. Because the grid now is one meter and he's about two meters high, so sort of. So this is the first thing I prepared and the second thing I put him in a folder which you find here, General Editors Content Browser. Uh, this is the folder with the rigs here. Under animation you find, well, since version I think my 2019, you find the rigs. These rigs are provided by the render people, renderpeople.com and a manual as well. He looks basically similar to these characters here and I put him in a special folder here and the source images which gives us the texture of this character are here. So uh, if you don't know where to put it once you've downloaded it from renderpeople.com uh, this is the file location here where you can put them all. When I open this folder I see uh, odd things here like the no representation of the character because I forgot to put the JPEG thumbnail into this folder then I would have seen it but uh, that's where, uh, where he is and where I find him. Now, um, the third thing to consider is the timing here. Because motion capture data come with a certain timing. You go back to Windows, Settings and Preferences, and Preferences again. And down here you find the time slider. Just brief meditation under Preferences. Further down you were under Settings in order to change uh, centimeters to meters and now you're going down to the time slider and here you find the frame rain, rate uh, at which uh, this character is moving. Uh, 24 per second which is the standard frame rate for television, for movies in the cinemas etc. And uh, if you change this to, let's go to an extreme, 120 for example frames per second you see that it's an extreme slow motion. It's quite elegant really, but it means that Maya has to calculate not 24 frames, but 120 frames per second. So we go back to the settings and preferences and to the time slider and go back to 24. So we need to stick to 24. If you want to change this to a higher speed, uh, for example to 30, you would have to rearrange all the keyframes of this character which is a bit of work but it's possible. You cannot see the stuttering effect in the play blast or here in the viewport. At least I didn't find a way to display it here. Uh, you have to actually render it. And in the render settings you see I called him Dancer25. Let me call him 24 because it's 24 frames per second. I'm rendering a PNG using name, number and extension. That's important. Uh, you have the choice name, number and extension or name, extension and number and I warn you not to use name, extension and number because when the number is last your operating system, at least on Windows, does not recognize the file as a an image. So you need the extension last. Frame padding is 4 because we have we deal with 1000 frames and we start at frame 400 and go to frame 1000 and this is the important number. So when we render him with a frame rate of 24, which is the setting here, by frame 1 means that Maya renders 24 frames per second. Let's do this. When I render it with Arnold, it takes quite a while. It's still rendering here. And now it's done 13 seconds. This is the GPU rendering actually. When I switch back to the CPU and render it again, it's updating the scene now. It's rendering in three seconds uh, for 
A reason I don't know this is faster. The CPU renders this scene faster. And how about rendering the scene with Maya? How do we go about this? Well, we go to the settings here and we choose the Maya software renderer here. And it's still down to 24, etc. And by frame 1, that's the cr crucial thing here. And now let, let us have a look here and Maya renders it. It looks differently because Maya deals with lights differently but it uh, really renders the image very fast. And uh, that's what I'm going to do now. We go to rendering here and we go to render and we render the sequence. The perspective window render sequence and now Maya starts rendering this animation. And I come back to you once it's finished and we'll have a look at it. You see that the motion and the jump now whoop, is fine. That's typical. We're rendering at 24 frames per second. Now since we're rendering high speed here we can just change by frame to 2. That means Maya doesn't render frames 400, 401, 402, 403, etc. But it renders frames numbered 400, 402, 404, 406, etc. So let's do this. And I call this 24B. So we don't mix up the names, the file names. Render sequence. You see down there in the timeline it jumps from 14 to 16 to 18 to 20 etc. It's pretty fast as you can see and I'll fast forward again now. In the Maya package there is a program which is called fcheck. It's really tiny in terms of bytes and it's been around for ages and it does a good job in playing back animations. And as you can see it's uh, dealing with our Dancer 24B and it's loading the sequence into its memory. Now it's getting to frame 1000 and now it starts at the beginning. So this is the timing use you have. He's dancing much too fast. You will see him jump in the air after this pirouette I guess much too fast landing down. You see it's playing back the animation pro in proper frames per second which is 24. So obviously it's too fast because we skipped every second frame in the rendering process. So what we can do now is we reduce this from 24 to 12. So it's going half speed now. So we interpret the missing images as we need to double each image. So frame 400 is being repeated once. Frame 402 is repeated once. So we have a sequence which is basically showing us the real time with our nice cartoony stuttering effect. The jump is the jump we want to have. When you load this sequence into your proper video editing program and you need to do this in order to get the, the timing right, uh, you need to deal with what is called an image sequence here, build sequence. It's the same in all kinds of uh, video editing softwares like Final Cut Pro X or Premiere After Effects etc. I'm using Shotcut which is an open source program which does a, an excellent job especially for exporting different kinds of formats into different kinds of formats. For example WebM which is the format for Wikipedia. And this is the crucial factor which we just did in Maya. We omitted every second image and now we need to repeat. That's Wiederholung means repetition. We repeat every frame twice. So we have two frames per image. And now um, it's recalculating this and it has the same length as before which is 24 seconds and now when we drag it into the timeline 
we get the proper timing with our nice cartoon stuttering effect. And this file has the proper playback speed of 24, so we can export it and we're fine. So to sum this up, if you want a timing which looks like a cartoon stuttering effect, then you need to change that by frame rate in the render settings of Maya and later on in your video editing software you need to increase that speed again, double that speed again, and then you're back to normal with that nice stuttering effect. Because when you play it back in a video software which does play back every frame you rendered, you get this as opposed to this which is the proper speed, which is just doubling each frame. That's a different rendering using Arnold, took much longer to render. And here's a cartoon scene in the background, you see clouds, the mountain, etc. And now comes in the character. I did that cartoony thing with this cartoon-like vehicle and he dances in a more or less normal, at a normal pace. Does his jump pretty soon and I just wanted to show you that uh, you can do this cartoon look very easily in Maya and if you want to have a look at the Toon Shader, the Arnold Toon Shader, I did several tutorials about it. And with this I leave you now, this is a long tutorial I know, and have a nice day, bye bye, till next Tuesday.